What the? Oh my god. Why does it How is it this good? Is this my best Dark friend? magic. Hello, this is Ken. I like making things. I like making things out of paper, and I like making things cooler. Especially my figures. Sometimes figures don't look all that screen accurate. All they need is a bit of touch up here and there to unleash the hidden potential. I also love using everyday tools and materials to recreate iconic scenes from my figures, so they can shine on my display. Subscribe to my channel and join my DIY adventure as I ask myself the same question every week. Can I make it? Last week, I worked on Venom from the Null and Venom 2 pack. I tried a couple of new things and Venom turned out epic. It is now my favorite Venom figure. Check it out. Yes, I got another McFarlane figure. This time is the Black Adam figure from the movie. Quick question. I don't keep the boxes, but I still try not to damage the packaging. How do collectors take the card and base out without destroying this cardboard? The cardboard actually stabbed me when I tried to take the card and base out. Okay, here's the figure out of the box. Maybe it's the costume design, but from afar, it kinda looks like a basic figure. Maybe it's his shoulders. They don't look like they're connected to his body. But this figure shines up close. Okay, maybe not literally. I think they captured Dwayne Johnson's likeness pretty well. You can definitely tell it's him, but I think there's one small issue with his face. So, let's, let's deconstruct, deconstruct this, this figure. figure. There's an FAQ on the paint and brushes I use in the description box below. I love that they did a black wash on the gold gauntlets and belt. That makes the gold look so much more realistic. <clears throat> Another thing I like is that his suit has all these details molded in, but they are not that noticeable. I want to make them a bit more pronounced. The lightning bolt on his chest is... comically bright. I'm going to add a bit of black to it to make it look more like this. As for the head, it is in the wrong color. Dwayne Johnson's skin color is a bit redder in real life. They kind of gave him a yellowish skin tone. It isn't too far off, but because it's kind of similar to the gold and yellow on his suit, it makes the figure look muted in color, if that makes sense. Anyway, I think this figure just needs some minor touches, then it should be good. So. Can I make it? Let's start with the suit. This is my plan. In order to bring out the details, I'm going to rub a thin layer of black over the suit, starting with the back. I like testing things on the back first, so I can get used to how the paint applies on the plastic. Alright, so my plan is to rub the black paint into the little markings and crevices on the suit to darken them a bit. And then with the paper towel, I'm going to rub the paint away. That should clean up and remove the paint on the surface. Mm, did that work? I thought it would be more obvious. Anyway, I'm going to do the same to his arms. I mentioned it earlier. I don't really like the shoulders here. I see two shiny bowling balls sticking out of his shoulder. A layer of paint should get rid of that weird plastic sheen. And the same thing on his legs. The lines on his legs are actually fine, but I still want to paint over them to make sure they look consistent with the rest of the figure. When I look at photos of the rock's black atom, I see that the suit kinda has this reflective texture. It's not a metal suit, but it's a bit more reflective than a typical spandex suit. So I'm gonna mix a dark dun metal color and apply it onto the suit, starting with the shoulder pads. Yes, I got rid of the shine only to add it back in. It's a different kind of shine, okay? The original figure has this rubbery plastic sheen, but I'm going for a heavier stone-like reflection. Hope that makes sense. I'm also rubbing a bit of this color onto the suit too. 
so that it reflects a bit when the light hits it. Oh, and also his hand thingies. Can't forget those. Ooh, the suit is already looking more solid and three-dimensional. Just a couple more strokes here and there. That should do it. Alright, now for his lightning bolt. I like that there's a bit of shading done to it. But it looks like it's taped onto his suit. According to the reference images, the lightning bolt has this charred look to it. So I'm going to dab a bit of black onto the edges to replicate that look. The key here is to make sure there's minimal amount of paint on the brush. That way, I can slowly build up the intensity, instead of having blobs of paint on the lightning bolt. so much more natural. Now the glow makes sense. Speaking of glow, I want the lightning bolt to glow even more. So I'm going to dab a thin layer of gold onto it, to make it shinier and even more golden. Ah, now it's super reflective. It looks like it's made out of energy now. Cool. Okay, I know I praised the black wash on the gold. I really do like them. But if I'm going for screen accuracy, I'm gonna have to darken them with the black. But they look so good. It feels wrong to darken them, but I have to trust the process. Alright, time to work on the face. I haven't really worked on a human face in a while. The last time I painted a human face was for Star-Lord. After that, I did Ultron, Symbiote Spider-Man, Null, and Venom. Okay, I did Batman too, but I feel like I didn't do a good job there. I was rusty. I want to redeem myself. Let's see if I can make this head even better. The issue here in my opinion is that the color they used doesn't seem too natural. He kinda looks like a potato here. Please don't kill me. The rock skin color is a bit darker and redder, so I mixed myself a very similar shade but with a bit of red added to it to kind of correct the skin color. I think this color looks a bit more natural. Mm, hmm, something really strange is happening. The paint is actually drying in a weird way. It's hard to see on camera. But the paint's kinda disintegrating. I think it's because I'm mixing three different brands of dollar store paint. It looks a bit patchy, but also kinda works. Cause it's kinda giving the head skin texture. Okay, I have to stop breathing. I need to do his eyebrows. Okay, I'm getting there. The mouth seems a bit pale, so let me add some color back in. Oh no, too much. Please come off, please come off. Okay. The last thing I'm gonna do is to make it look sweaty. I normally never do this, but I think a sweaty look fits Dwayne's character. And also because he's bald. Adding a bit of shine will make it look less like a potato. Oh my god, what have I done? Why does it look so lifelike? This was a potato a few minutes ago. I thought last week's Venom was my best painted head, but I think Black Adam just took that spot. Like what? I can't stop looking at this masterpiece. Okay, I stop. Gotta do the neck too, so the skin color matches. And the hands. I always forget to paint the hands.
Hey, you can now support me on Patreon. I post quite regularly there, from behind-the-scenes updates to sneak peeks to video breakdowns. Top tier members will receive a DIY 3D mini poster every month. These mini posters look great by themselves, but even cooler next to other mini posters. I love making things, and this is my way to thank my supporters. The link to my Patreon is in the description box down below. All right, here's the finished figure. Oh man, this turned out way better than I expected. I thought it would just be a minor upgrade, but it genuinely surprised me that this turned out this good. I'm still shocked at how lifelike this looks now. Skin color is very very difficult to get right, and I feel like I nailed this one. The suit is also greatly improved. It no longer has this unpainted plastic look to it. The way it subtly reflects light makes the suit look so much more three-dimensional. I also love how the lightning bolt turned out. I like that it's bumpy and not a flat surface. It makes the reflection look dynamic, like there's energy moving within the lightning bolt. And of course, the face. It's perfect. The only complaint I have is these McFarlane figures can't really turn their heads as much as Marvel Legends. Actually, this applies to other joints as well. These figures do a better job with how the joints look visually but they are more restricting. His thighs can only raise and turn so much. It really limits the possibility of the figure, which is a bit of a bummer, because the figure looks so cool now. I had a similar problem with Batman. I guess it's a trade-off. It's either look more lifelike with limiting possibility, or have a wider range of motion but look more toy-like. McFarlane figures definitely look good. Speaking of looking good, Let's end this with a photo shoot. I can just feel Black Adam's intensity here. That face sculpt is really good. It looks just like Dwayne. Okay, let me put him in more dynamic poses. Ah, this upper body shot looks pretty good. But this is what I mean. This is the highest I could raise his leg. It's not too bad, but it doesn't look that natural. So upper body shots it is. That face, I can look at it all day. Okay, let's zoom out for a bit. A couple more standing poses. And back to upper body shots. He's more fun to pose like this, because I can hide the limitations of his legs. Besides, with that face, you don't need to look anywhere else. Do you like the painted head? Give this video a like if you like what I've done. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. I'm gonna end this with a bunch of headshots. It's like there's no bad angle for Dwayne no matter how hard I try. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I will likely do more McFarlane figures in the future, so stay tuned. And as always, stay inspired and I'll see you next week. I can make it, so can you.